Look, I know that you've been working so, so hard to improve your ball striking, improve your accuracy, improve your distance with your irons or your driver. But when you get onto the golf course, stuff like this happens. You don't strike your irons, you start hitting them shocking, you start hitting it into water hazards, or your driver starts going everywhere. What I'm finding is when golfers get out into the golf course, they often have these three major faults that is costing them distance, costing them accuracy, and costing them strike. I'm gonna cover them in a real simple way in this week's video, because you know what? They're pretty easy to fix if you follow this simple process. Now, before I get into the video, look, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Just press that little bell button, next subscribe button, you get notified every time I release a video just like this one. Plus, you never have to remember a thing. I always put a free download practice guide in the description box below. Great, so we're going to cover the three major things I see, the major faults I see when you step out on that golf course and it all seems to go a bit wrong from time to time. So we're going to cover a driver as well towards the end, but we'll start with the irons and then work up to drive it. So the very first thing I find when people get on the golf course, just naturally, you want to do well, you want to add the control to your game. So what tends to happen is this, our bodies face the ball or they're even facing the target too much. And what happens is you don't make a big enough movement or a natural flowing movement into your backswing. It tends to be a bit handsy and armsy here. So you might find it either you're coming here too much or you just pick the club up in the air. But what you don't get is a lovely coordinated backswing where you've stored energy, yeah? Now I know that you, so I, you know, you might be of a certain age where you've got limited flexibility. So this exercise, what I'm gonna give you in a second, will really, really help. So I want you to have a lovely coordinated motion away and it's a flowing motion away, right? So you actually move the body away from the target, which is nerve wracking, I know sometimes, because people want to stay over the ball because it feels safe, yeah? So here's what I want you to do. Get yourself set into your golfing posture. And then this exercise I actually learned from a, a gentleman who pro called Fred Shoemaker, absolutely brilliant. So what I want you to do here is this, I want you to look over your trail shoulder as if somebody's called out your name. So you're gonna turn and look over your shoulder. I'm actually looking at this, I'm looking and I'm looking up to the sky. Simple as this. What do you notice when I've done this? Notice in order for me to do the action, my knees have moved, my hips have moved, my torso's moved, everything has moved here. I've naturally wound up. Without all the complicated swing thoughts, I've just gone, look up to the ceiling. My ankles are moving, everything's moved. You can do this too. Now, you might not be able to move as far as me, but this is a great exercise for you to establish exactly how far you can move. Notice this, I'm not looking around because that will get the club going around. I'm looking up to the sky and behind me. Now, once you've got that sensation, okay, all you do is go, right, put my hands up, move your head back, and now you've got an idea of where the full backswing is. Now, notice also, how naturally centered I'm still staying. I am not moving massively off the ball when I do this. When I look up, watch this. Am I moving massively off the ball? No, I'm still pretty centered. I'm simply spiraling up to the top in a very simple and easy way. Once you've got that sensation, we now add flow to this first motion. So we swing back here, flow to the top. Look up to the top for a second. Really allow that to go with some serious speed. Then once you've got a sensation of that, start to move your head back to the ball and see if you can keep repeating the motion. When people move back to the ball sometimes, they start to get more static. Don't let that happen. Really feel how the lower body, everything's mobile to the top, but look how easy this is. Now, before we move on to mistakes two and three, what we'll do is we'll hit some shots like this. Now, we're not, don't worry about striking at the stage. All you're trying to do is be willing to mess up and feel this level of freedom in the backswing to store that energy and give yourself a great chance to start hitting the ball much, much straighter. So I'm gonna wind it back and through, okay? Don't care about strike at this stage. Oh, it's going a little bit left. Will it be water bound? Oh, it is. But we don't care about strike at this stage. All we're doing is stage number one, winding up that power, right? Now, once you've done that, you've got a sense of where the backswing needs to be. The next stage is really, really simple, but it's a major fault that I see often maybe you're doing now, uh, now and then, particularly if you're slicing it or, or hitting the ground behind the golf ball with your, with your irons, is you get to the top of the backswing here and all we want to do is, is understand how to start the downswing. Well, if you imagine throwing a ball just here, look, you would naturally start the downswing in a just authentic way. 
bang. So what I want you to do is, is avoid this fall. Get to, getting to the top and literally starting it with your arms, starting it with the shoulders, starting it with the top part. You've got to start the downswing from the bottom up, but it can be very complicated and too difficult to, for people to comprehend or think about. But if you imagine throwing a ball, whether it's your trail hand or whether you're throwing a disc this way, just get into what I call the throw position here. So it looks like this. You've wound up one, two. There's your turn, one, two. Notice the bend I've got naturally in this trail side here. I am not, look, up here and then going throw, throw. That gets into flicky paw strikes. I'm going one, two. Right, simple as that. So you're getting into one, two. We're in throw position, right. That then swiftly moves us on to number three. Well, what do you do? This is we've cured one fault, we've cured two faults by learning the feeling of just throw. Well, what do we need to do? We need to then actually throw, which then cures fault number three, all almost together, where golfers don't throw. What they do, and you might be the same, is they get to the top here, and as opposed to getting into slot and throwing naturally, you move as a block. You move as a unit too much. You're pushing it through. You're trying to control it. Because why? Because on a golf course, you want to hit it straight. You want control, but you end up hanging on. And because you hang on and don't let this go, you don't throw it, your lower body doesn't work to throw, your arms don't work to throw, and you end up going like this. So let's link all those three things together before we go on to the driver and show you how to transfer this over with the big tee shots. So we're gonna go one, two, and throw it through. Look at this side. One, two, and throw it through. You can almost see one. Look at that motion, look at the bend I've got here. Throw it through. One, two, throw it through. Now start to add some flow to that. One, two, and throw it through. One, two, and throw it through. Let's start to see how this starts to get into the action now in the golf swing. So, one, two, and throw it through. Bit some speed there on that shot there. There we go, just up onto the edge of the green. Nice, so how do you apply this to your driver? Well, it's almost the same with a small little change. So let's now head on to driver and we'll just move to a par five hole, I think it's number five on Medina here on the Trackman simulator. Now, super tight this hole, super, super tight. So, but fun. So what changes do you make with driver? Very little, obviously you're gonna change the setup. We're not gonna go into that, but plenty of videos on how to set up to driver. This is about the importance of really avoiding this first mistake. If you do not move here and you stay too still over driver, you're gonna get hands in arms there. This is disaster. It starts to get you chopping at driver. You cannot chop. We need to get the club driver look sweeping up off the tee. Now notice, to do that, you're gonna to have to get the club look much, much more behind you here, much more in a rotational uh, manner to be able to get this arc necessary to really hit your driver well. Now I know that you're gonna have different levels of flexibility to me, and that's fine. This exercise will help you feel it. What I will say though is this, with an iron, we wanna come more down on the golf ball, so when I do look up behind me, I'm looking much higher. With a driver, we wanna sweep it, so I'm gonna look a little bit more behind me, okay? This helps to create more of an arc this way. So I feel that motion once or twice. Look behind, feel where I need to be. Then start having the flow again, okay? Let it flow into that position. Then once I've got the sensation, I'll move my head back and then literally keep going there, okay? Hugely, hugely important. Once I've done that, it's like one, two, and throw it through. Remember, throw it through. Don't guide it through, don't push it through. Throw it through. So we'll start off with a nice gentle drive to start with, and this is how I would suggest you work on this. Don't be worried about where the ball goes, just nice and smooth, nice and effortless. Let's see how we get on. So, here we go, one, two and throw it through, okay? So nice and easy to get yourself going. Don't have any real big shots to start with, just get the rhythm of this backwards and forwards. One, two and throw it through. Once you've done that, then you can start to build up 
the speed and the power to start to launch it. But don't be worried about any real big ones to start with. Keep it nice and smooth, nice and effortless. Okay, then you can gradually, bit by bit, add more and more power in one, two, three, four. So, in summary, what have we done? Basically, we need to get the one, two, and throw it through. What were the major mistakes? Really simply, major mistakes were this. Not enough rotation, not knowing how to rotate. How do you do that? Look behind you, yeah, the Fred Schumacher exercise. Turn over, look behind you here, then flow to that position. Get the sensation of where that needs to be. It feels scary because I'm sure, look, you want control. That gets you hovering too much over the golf ball, yeah? Once you've done that, got the sensation, we don't hit from the top. We start with our lower ground. So simply get into your throwing position. Feel what that's like, the skimming stone, throwing a frisbee, whatever it is. So it becomes one, two, right? Feel that. Maybe hit some shots in from here, just feel that motion. But then it's a throw it through, not push it through. Launch your entire body at it. Throw it through, skim it, whatever it might need to be. Then suddenly look, you use naturally, because you can all throw, throw, throw it through, you're adding speed and flow and natural momentum to your entire motion. So I really, really hope this helped. If you did, give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with one or two of your friends you think could do with something simple. And always remember, one, two, throw it through. If you enjoyed the channel, remember that I'll put a free downloadable practice guide in the description box below, so you'll never have to remember a thing. But until next week, have a great golfing week.